evening, everybody, and welcome to our 2021 virtual Light of the Life service. This time last year, we had no alternative but to deliver this service uh, virtually, but it proved so successful that we've decided to do this as well as our face-to-face -face events this year. I know that I, for one, really enjoyed sitting at home in the quiet of my own front room with the Christmas lights on and really reflecting on the year that we've just had. So hopefully those of you that join us this year virtually will enjoy the experience too. On behalf of the St John's Hospice family, we hope that there's something in this service that all of you find some comfort in. We're thinking of you this Christmas. Thank you for supporting St John's. We're your local hospice and we're only here because people like you take the time to support us too. On behalf of everyone here, we wish you a peaceful Christmas and let's hope for brighter days in 2022. Wherever you are, my love will find you. I wanted you more than you will ever know, so I sent love to follow wherever you go. As high as you wish, it's quick as an elf. You'll never go out it, it stretches itself. So climb any mountain, climb up the sky, my love will find you, my love can fly. Make a big splash, go out on a limb, my love will find you, my love can swim. It never gets lost, never fades, never ends. If you're working, or playing, or sitting with friends. You can dance till you're dizzy, paint till you're blue. There's no place, not one, that my love can't find you. And if someday you're lonely, or someday you're sad, or you decide to cat at baseball, or think you've been bad, just lift up your face, feel the wind in your hair. That's me, my sweet baby, my love is right there. In the green of the grass, in the smell of the sea, in the cloud floating by at the top of a tree, in the sound crickets make at the end of the day, you are loved, you are loved, you are loved, they all say. My love is so high and so wide and so deep, always right there even when you're asleep. So hold your head high and don't be afraid to march out the front of your own parade. If you're still my full babe or you're all the way grown, my promise to you is you're never alone. You are my angel, my darling, my star, and my love will find you wherever you are.
Hello, my name is Josie. My darling husband Steve was diagnosed with bowel cancer in July 2017. In the face of adversity, Steve always remained positive and always smiling. He endured two surgeries and numerous chemotherapy treatments. He fought this disease with such strength and dignity, yet still determined to live life to the full, even climbing the Lakeland Fells and kayaking on our favourite lakes. He was often so weak and exhausted from treatment, but was adamant he wanted to continue working. One day, he even turned up for a work meeting with his chemo pump attached. He was an inspiration to us all. In April 2020, Steve's condition deteriorated and he was admitted to St John's Hospice for a few days for a much needed procedure to improve his quality of life during the final weeks. Because we had been self-isolating for 12 weeks, I was also able to stay with Steve. We were both very grateful that we could be together and we soon realised what a special place a hospice is, filled with wonderful people, dedicated to showing love, care and respect to patients and their loved ones. It was our 43rd wedding anniversary during our stay. The staff surprised us with a beautiful wedding anniversary cake and the Prosecco to help us celebrate. We were so touched by this kind gesture. Steve was allowed home, but sadly two weeks later had to return as we knew his journey was coming to an end and he didn't want to die at home. Steve felt comfortable going back to the hospice and he knew that he was going to be in safe hands. Being fully aware his nursing care would become more complicated, but he felt peace and calm and everything was very dignified. Thankfully, the strict COVID procedures in the hospice made it possible for close family to visit. Our family felt so privileged to be able to visit Steve in his last weeks during a time of lockdown. It meant so much to them being able to support and be with us at such a difficult time. And all of this, despite the sacrifices staff had to make, not being able to see their own families. We can't tell you how much we appreciate you for this. Thank you for making it possible. During our stay, a specialist cuddle bed was being trialled at the hospice. We were very privileged to be given the opportunity to have use of this bed. It was special to both of us. It meant we could be close together when every moment of each day was so precious. It was much better than Steve lying on his own. On Steve's passing, I was able to lie by his side and hold him close. Sadly, Steve lost his heroic battle with cancer and passed away in June 2020. On the 25th of October last year, in memory of my gorgeous Steve, and with appreciation and thanks to St John's Hospice, my family and I embarked on a 30 mile hike along the Alls Waterway to help raise funds towards the purchase of a specialist cuddle bed. We managed to raise a phenomenal 1,500 plus pounds, more than three times our original target, and thanks to other supporters from all over the community, rallied to raise an amazing £14,000, enabling the hospice to purchase the specialist bed. Taking part in Light Up A Life event is a true honour and I undertake with great pride, hopefully to raise, raise awareness of St John's Hospice and to raise vital funds. All the staff at St John's Hospice are truly amazing, incredibly supportive, caring, compassionate and totally devoted to their work and have made a lasting impression on us all. My family and I are forever grateful for everything you have done for our Steve and for us. We cannot thank you enough. Thank you.
My name is David, and a uh, little over four years ago, my wife had a, a life-ending illness, and she was uh, uh, cared for in the hospice on ward for five weeks, and I lived here with her on the ward. Uh, after that, w we were able to go back to our own home, where the hospice cared for us just the same way as it had been in the hospice until she died. That was for some five weeks. And several months after that, I, was, I had a letter from the hospice asking me if I'd like to go on a seven-week course in bereavement. And I was very reluctant to do this. I just wanted to be by myself in my own grief. But then I reflected on that and decided that as the hospice had shown me how brilliant it was in looking after my wife and myself, then they would do the bereavement course very well. So I signed up for this and I met um, nine other people, some men, some ladies, uh, all very different ages, different backgrounds, lived in different positions. They, we had one thing in common, we had lost a husband or a wife. And so we went on this course together for um, s seven sessions over a period of 14 weeks. And we gradually got to know each other. Um, and it ended up actually, rather ironically, we eventually decided that at the end of the course, when the hospice felt it could do no more for us, and we would go our own way and look after ourselves, we decided not to go our own way, and we decided to stay as a group. And um, years later, we are still a group, and uh, we meet formally every month and um, and also individually from time to time and help each other with different tasks. I am an engineer so I sharpen garden tools. One lady is very good at sewing buttons on and that sort of thing and we, we back each other up and out of that, out of that um, experience I've had I felt I had lost my wife which was tragic to me uh, but I had gained nine other very, very close friends, and that I very, very much appreciated. Uh, on top of that, because I have great admiration for the hospice, I signed up as a volunteer and a fundraiser. And my fundraising has been jumping out of aeroplanes and parachuting to the ground. Uh, I'm not allowed to do that now for medical reasons. Um, uh, I do fundraising in whatever way I can, and I also work on the ward when, when I'm permitted, serving meals to the patients. That's not allowed at the moment because of the virus problem, but I'll go back to that as soon as possible. So I have a great admiration in this whole establishment, and it's um, very, very important that we keep it going. Thank you. If you're wondering where to find me, I'll tell you where I'll be. I'm in that in-between bit, the space where sky meets sea. 
in the whispers of the trees and the edges of your dreams, close enough to almost touch, but slightly out of reach. I'm in the moon and in the stars, but never really far. And always, always I'm there inside your heart. Good afternoon, my name's Jo Wilson and I'd like to tell you the reason why my family and wonderful friends all support St John's Hospice. My lovely mum, Chris Fury, who many people know from working on the Fury fruit and vegetable stalls in Lancaster and Morecambe, was a hard-working, strong, caring and funny lady. Unfortunately, at 67 years old, she was diagnosed with bladder cancer and in June 2014 was admitted to St John's Hospice. It was the first time that we'd been in the hospice and I was totally amazed by the setting, the serenity, the ambiance and the wonderful and welcoming staff team. In her time at the hospice, she was treated with love and respect and every evening got a gin and tonic as a treat um, and it was her tipple of choice. When it was time for Munch to come home, the transition was organised and went smoothly. This was when we were first introduced to the Hospice at Home team and they were truly outstanding. They visited every day, they were knowledgeable, supportive and so kind. They talked us through medication, processes, paperwork and next steps and how we could ensure that Munch, the name for my mum because she was dinky, um, was comfortable until she passed on the 16th of June 2014. Even after Munch had passed it was a hospice at home team who came to see her to ensure that everything was dealt with in a dignified manner and for that I can never thank them enough. The teams and people that work at St John's Hospice are amazing and that's why my family and friends fundraise every year so they can continue to do the great work they do. We do fun runs, we do cake sales, tabletop sales, we run a lot of miles and in April 2018 I was lucky enough to run London Marathon in memory of my wonderful munch and also on behalf of St John's Hospice. My family joins, up like, joins Light Up A Life every single year since Munch has passed. And it's a celebration of life and it enables us all to come together because most people have something in common. It's even a family affair at the Wilson House because my husband, John, puts up the lights in the trees at the hospice for the Light Up A Life celebration. Uh, and he does that on behalf of Bowker's Electrical. So when you drive past the hospice and you see those wonderful lights, that is for our, all of our family and friends. And it's my husband that's put those up. So on behalf of me and my family, I want to thank everyone who has supported us and takes such care and compassion in looking after people that we love. So thank you very much, St John's Hospice and the amazing teams that work there. And wishing you all a wonderful Christmas where we can celebrate those that are present and also those that are past and have a great new year. Join me in safely lighting a candle this evening as we also switch on our hospice tree lights. May we all unite now in silent reflection for one minute, remembering all those we have loved and continue to love through all that they have given us.
This is a really special moment in our hospice calendar. The moment that the light is going in the hospice grounds means that we're heading from the dark days towards the light. And tonight, in memory of Emma, I'm going to ask Oliver, Bethany and Holly to press the big red button and bring the light to all of us. In memory of Emma. Good evening, my name is Martin Fletcher and I'm the Commercial Director at SWS UK. We at SWS UK were honoured to have been given the opportunity to be the sponsor behind Light Up A Life for a second year. Working with the team at St John's over the last two Christmases 
has given us a wonderful insight into the work they do and the impact it has on our community. It comes as no surprise that the charity is highly regarded and much loved, so it really is a sponsorship that we're extremely proud of. If you don't know much about SWS UK, we are a garage door and shutter manufacturer based in Clafton, which is a couple of miles past Caton in the Loon Valley. We employ just over 120 people, with most employees living locally and in the community served by St John's Hospice. Over recent years, some of our employees and their families have unfortunately been in need of St John's services, which sadly has given SWS UK a personal connection to the hospice. However, this has highlighted the compassionate and discreet care carried out by nurses, healthcare professionals and therapists which make up St John's team. Light Up A Life offers a poignant way to remember loved ones, in addition to being the sponsor behind this year's event. We wanted to take the opportunity to remember our colleagues who were sadly no longer with us. Five of the lights on St John's Tree are dedicated to five previous SWS UK employees and I speak on behalf of everyone here at SWS UK when I say we will be thinking of them and their families this Christmas. We would like to wish St John's the very best with Light Up A Life 2021. It has truly been a privilege to be associated with this event. We would also like to wish our local community a very happy Christmas with their families and loved ones. Thank you.